Thank you very much. And thanks, everybody, for attending our session, which has been uh, moved as the first session of the day. So I understand that it's pretty early for everybody. Uh, but we will try to keep this um, entertaining and short and sweet, hopefully. So we're presenting about um, a new workflow for named entity recognition. We work primarily on ancient Greek, and so we're going to talk about uh, specifically named entity recognition in ancient Greek texts. Um, do I actually have to explain what named entity recognition is? No, I don't think so. Um, so, <laughs> um, so the, the starting point for our presentation is something that may be familiar to a lot of people in the room, actually. Named entity recognition has pretty well-developed workflows and pipelines for many modern languages, not all of them, but many. Um, but for ancient languages and ancient Greek uh, in this case, we don't have adequate uh, named entity and NLP infrastructure in general. So um, this creates an obstacle to basically any effort in extracting, classifying, and recognizing named entities across texts in many ancient languages. And uh, there are a few challenges that sort of motivate this lack of infrastructure, but more in general, it's because we don't have nearly as many resources as there are in modern languages, obviously. And so we don't have adequate entity labels, entity classes, we don't have enough authority lists, uh, we don't have enough training data sets, and hopefully I'm gonna go back to this point at the end of the presentation. And then of course there are contextual problems, like no noisy OCR input, OCR is not nearly as good for ancient texts as it is for modern texts. There is variety in terms of language, in terms of spelling, in terms of context, um, in terms of conventions in names, and so on and so forth. So there is a lot of challenges that we need to address that are um, more or less specific to historical texts and ancient languages in particular. And so for this reason, there has been uh, quite a few a system of a set of efforts in terms of um, ancient languages specifically. We thought we should mention at least a few. Uh, everybody I feel like is familiar with the CLTK, the Classical Language Toolkit, which was probably the first established pipeline for NLP in ancient languages. Many of them are covered and it has an identity recognition component. Um, and then more recently, uh, Monica Berti, who was here presenting a poster the other day, um, improved a manual annotation and machine learning combination with Inception, which is an annotation platform. Um, in 2019, between 2019 and 2017, there was the Herodotus project, which was on Latin specifically, and still in Latin more recently, I'm sure a lot of you are aware, Patrick Burns presented uh, Latin Sci which is another pipeline, transformer-based pipeline, that has uh, an NER component. Um, we're working primarily on ancient Greek, and we, have, we are presenting kind of a different approach and a different workflow for this particular task. So I'm going to let Tarek present on the specifics. Yeah. Uh, let me start with like a very brief uh, overview of our previous work. We have been mainly working on translation alignment applied to ancient and uh, historical languages, mainly uh, ancient Greek and uh, Latin, and a little bit on uh, Persian, Arabic, and Hebrew. So we have, uh, and for this purpose, we have uh, uh, developed Ogaret Translation Alignment Editor. We started 2017. Our aim was to collect uh, training data for, uh, to develop automatic translation alignment model, but the tool has been used for many other different tasks, especially for teaching and learning uh, ancient languages. Here we can see how uh, annotators can also share their alignments with uh, very uh, uh, straightforward and easy to use uh, reading environment. Uh, and then after collecting tra uh, the training data, we build an alignment uh, workflow. Here we can see like very uh, simple uh, pipeline, uh, it's, uh, it, it makes use of multilingual language models, uh, especially um, like multilingual PERT and XLM Roberta. We have like, so we start with tokenization, then we extract uh, the multilingual embeddings from the uh, model, and then we build similarity matrix using cosine similarity or dot product among the, the tokens. And at the end, we extract the alignment using some thresholding and uh, normalization uh, functions such as softmax and argmax and ethermax. Here, here we can see an example of uh, the similarity matrix. But the problem 
XLM Roberta and Embert, they don't support ancient Greek. They are trained on modern Greek, and for this reason, we needed to uh, fine tune these models with our uh, data. So, first, we started to fine tuning the model, the multilingual models, with monolingual uh, ancient Greek data. 12 million tokens extracted from Brice's digital library and first thousand years of Greek. Then uh, the second uh, step was uh, fine tuning the model unsupervised with uh, 40, uh, uh, 45,000 parallel sentences. And at the end, we fine, fine tuned the model supervised with accurate translation alignment, uh, world level translation alignment produced by uh, experts and trusted users. We got almost uh, 190,000 translation pairs. And at the end, we could use this language model to uh, build uh, uh, accurate transition alignment model for ancient languages. And here we have, uh, I mean, the model is published on Hugging Face. And we have built a user interface to allow users to use the alignment tool where they can just copy and paste their text and click on align and get the, the alignment with uh, various uh, visualization options. Then we we wanted like to train an AR model. So now we have uh, a language model. We can fine tune this model on the NAR task. Actually, we followed, we, we experimented with two approaches, like the first approach, we fine tuned the language model that we have. Actually, there are other ancient Greek uh, monolingual model, but our model it was, I guess, the only multilingual one. And then the second approach was uh, uh, performing annotation projection, like when we have parallel corpus, Greek English, for example. Since we have for English uh, many accurate tools for NER, we could like annotate the English text and do text alignment and then project the annotation from English to ancient Greek. Let's uh, start with the first uh, workflow. I mean, we collected uh, data. We mainly had like three main uh, labels, person's location and the MISC one. We collected our data from the Perseus uh, Digital Library, from the project Digital Athenaeus. Uh, uh, the text was annotated with uh, Inception, and uh, Chiara also annotated uh, Odyssey using uh, Rikogito. Here we can have an, an overview of the training data set. We had, I mean, the, the Digital Athenaeus like, used um, so many uh, labels, so we had to reduce them into three uh, labels, like person, location, and MISC. And at the end, we got almost 24,000 uh, uh, entities in our training data. And then we started uh, like the first experiment with uh, with our multilingual model. And for evaluation, like we had, uh, uh, like Kiara also annotated 50 random paragraphs from Herodotus uh, with almost 351 ancient Greek entities. They were like outside the, the training and testing environment, just it's unseen data. And here we can see the performance of the model. Like we see the location still uh, had uh, like less accuracy than the other models. So we thought maybe we can use some cross-lingual transfer since our model is, uh, is multilingual. So we thought we can train the model with uh, English in our data set, uh, such as Wiki, NN, and Con LTP. And here we can see the improvement on the recall and F1 for, for the test and the precision and F1 for the MISC and precision recall F1 on the persons on the test uh, data set. And on the evaluation, we see the improvement on all values. Then there are another monolingual model, just we wanted to test everything possible. And we see the results also. The monolingual model had achieved like almost closed results with like very slight improvement on the, with the multilingual uh, uh, model with English in ER. I mean, the problem here that the training data set was like mainly single token entities, like the performance, we, we have done some qualitative analysis, analysis and the results were like very good for single token entities, but on the multi-token entities, it was uh, the performance a little bit uh, uh, but so we thought how we can improve our model, how we can expand our training data set because like doing manual annotation is really very expensive. So we thought, okay, we can use our alignment model to 
do this annotation projection, as I said, we have Warrior Corpus, for example, the Bible, and then uh, we do the NAR on English using, for example, Spacey or Allen NLB or Flair NLB. There are so many accurate models. And at the same time, we can fine tune the, the model for transition alignment and then perform the transition alignment and do the annotation projection. Here is an example how we started with NAR for English and then uh, do the uh, alignment and at the end we project the annotations from uh, English to ancient Greek. Actually, we, we used this experiment for the New Testament on three languages, Greek, Latin, Arabic, and also many other languages. We tested that also on Hebrew, Akkadian, uh, and Syriac, and but the problem and Coptic also, the problem, these languages are not supported by Excel M. Roberta and uh, M. Bert because, I mean, the alphabet was not included in the vocabulary, so the solution maybe we can train multilingual model from scratch using all these corpora. Here we can see the results. We have uh, 6,000 entities in Greek, like uh, 463 are multi-token, and then we can use this to expand our that I said. Then Kiara has done the qualitative evaluation and she can report on, on that. Yeah, so um, we did a qualitative evaluation based on uh, random entities, random sentences that were extracted. So we ran the qualitative evaluation on about 500 entities. Um, and we assigned basically a score depending on the various combinations between correct alignment, correct uh, recognition or you know incorrect alignment correct recognition and so on and so forth and you can have a look at the results uh, at this table right here you can see that ancient Greek performs considerably better than Latin and Arabic as well and that depends on basically the size of the training data sets that we had which was considerably larger for ancient Greek uh, slightly less big for Latin and definitely less for Arabic um, so although the model performs really well, it works, and actually we are not talking about it today, but we trained it on some new ancient Greek corpora and on some new annotations from uh, the digital periegesis annotated by someone who is in the room, Elton Barker, um, not to name any names, obviously, and uh, um, there are still, I think, some structural elements that uh, we want to improve on. And uh, so, for example, Tarek mentioned that because of the nature of the training data so far, the model achieves a better performance on personal names as opposed to locations. And this is the reason why we were seeking more data for uh, places and for place names as opposed to people. Um, and then there are multi-token entities, which is uh, kind of a big deal for ancient Greek, for Latin, and for many other ancient languages. But the problem is that they are considerably um, less frequent in training data. I mean, you, you see, you've seen this slide. Um, there are very few multi-token entities in our annotated corpus, and it's very difficult for them to come by. And it's also very difficult to understand the limits of what a multi-token entity is, uh, as I'm sure many of you are aware. And then there is the uh, miscellaneous category, which is its own thing. Um, other people use other categories to express uh, sort of problematic entity labels. We decided to use the miscellaneous because um, at that point it was just something that worked for us. But uh, as you can probably understand, in miscellaneous there is a lot of different things. We used it mainly for groups, but groups in ancient texts are extremely diverse. Uh, there are ethnonyms, there are groups of people, but there are also groups of people that are, that are used as placeholders and so as place names. So are those people, are those groups, are those, are those places? And there's a whole conversation happening about how to improve um, a specifically um, ancient text focused uh, lab ent entity labeling workflow because we, we need that, honestly. And so this is where our future work lies. Um, we're trying to work on a better entity classification effort, coming up with something that is a little bit more focused than miscellaneous, um, and uh, developing new data sets for ancient Greek at the moment or exchanging data with people who have annotated texts uh, that can work for us, so we badly need annotated texts uh, to this day. We need new entities, we need new named entities, we need new texts. 
and, um, and we want to add more training corpora to the alignment model as well because we tested that it performs better the more we add being a multilingual model. Um, and then we have a bunch of downstream tasks that we, that we also want to test the strategy on. Uh, sentence alignment is on top of our interest right now, but there's also word senses, ambiguation, and sentiment analysis, uh, if you want like a preview of our work for the next 20 years. Um, and then I just wanna say a couple of things about um, sort of big picture things here, because um, this is so far the things that we are doing, but the reason why we are doing this um, is kind of larger, in my opinion, and broader discipline in terms of discipline and um, transdisciplinarity efforts. Um, we're working on a transformer-based model, and I don't have to explain that to this room, but um, right now, especially in classical philology, we have a big opportunity because transformers have, um, I mean, I don't wanna say revolutionize the field, but they definitely present a fantastic opportunity. They are unprecedented in the performance that they can achieve, in their accuracy, in their precision, and so on. Um, and so we have a big opportunity to actually create infrastructure for low resource languages that we didn't have before. Um, however, there is still a lot to do specifically within the philological effort. We need training data sets. We still need that. Uh, there, is, there is nothing that we can do. It's true that transformer, transformers work considerably better with less training data, but we still need that. Um, we still need corpus-focused uh, training data sets. We still need annotations. And we also need gold standards. We need a standard workflow. We need um, entity labels that are specific to the text that we're working on. Otherwise, we're, we keep getting stuck with personal location miscellaneous. And that, in the long run, doesn't actually help the people that it is supposed to help. Um, so classification is a big challenge. Um, long story short, we need data uh, still to this day. We need people with domain expertise, with expertise in the languages who can annotate and who can give us data. And, and this is a big problem. I mean, we are at the DH 2023 conference. To this day in 2023, it is a big problem because as Tarek was mentioning, it is very difficult and very expensive to get someone to annotate thousands and thousands of tokens and nobody pays for that. And we are, we're stuck here. Like we are developing fantastic transformers models and still what we need money for and what we need infrastructure for are annotators, editors in 2023. <laughs> um, so I don't know, I don't know how to end this uh, other than get in touch if you're, if you're working on ancient languages or low resource languages in general, we're interested in working with you. We can provide data, we can provide support, but let's try to join our forces because this is probably the only way that we can do this. I mean, there is probably 10 people in the world who are working on NLP and ancient languages at the same time. So we probably have to work together because there are so few of us. <laughs> Thank you very much.